Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this tutorial, we're going to build the JavaScript stopwatch, and this is the demo and it's provide three of the different functions. Okay, the first one which is used to start the time, okay, is count for the times, and the second is used to stop to push it. Right, and you can also by clicking this start button again for resume. Lastly, is this reset button. Alright, so now let's go ahead to build this JavaScript stopwatch. Alright, so to get started, I'll create a div with the class name container. Inside our container, we got the heading one as the title JavaScript stopwatch. And the next one, we got the paragraph. Inside our paragraph, we got the spam. And the first spam is the ID, is the second. And our sign zero zero. And we got the second spam. Giving an ID, tenth, and also a sign zero zero. So the next one, which is the button, right? So this paragraph is gonna hold the value. And the second, okay, the next one, the button. So the first button is start. And the next button is to stop. Okay, the last button is to reset the value. Right, so now let's open the default browser. Okay, so we're done for the content part. Now let's go ahead to the CSS file. Okay, select the body tag and set margin. Sorry, 0%. Set the padding 0%. And I would like to set the background color. I'm using the linear gradient to right hand side. So the first color I'm using the hex code, which is nine C E C F P. And the next color is six five C seven F seven. Last color is zero zero five two D four. Okay, so we go for the next style, which is the container. Okay, I'll set margin. Okay, for the site as 100 pixels and set it as auto. And for the text online, I'm gonna move to the center. And we can set the heading one, which is the title. We can set the font size to a 4 em. And the font family. And set to area color I'm gonna set it as white and we're going to style the paragraph which is um style the font size 5 em and the color I'm using the hash code which is color white okay and we're going to style the button okay which is the three function buttons so first of all I'm gonna set Bottom on. I'm gonna set padding. So for the top and bottom, I set to 18 pixels. Left, right, I'm going to set as 10 pixels. And the font size you can set to 1.2 em. And the wine, 118 pixels. Margin for the size, I'm gonna set it as uh, 10 pixels. Right, so now let's go ahead to check for the styling part. Right, so this is the demo. I think I missed a comma over here. Right, so go back to the CSS file. So the last styling, which is when your mouse is hover through the button, I'm going to set it as cursor pointer. And set the background color to a hashtag. Okay, which is this color, so I'm gonna grab this color code, paste it over here. And for the colors, I'm gonna set it as white. And I'm gonna make some transactions. 
0.4 and lastly which is the right button none so now let's go ahead to check so open default browser Right, so we're done for the styling part and the content part, so we can move on to the JavaScript part, which is to make the button functional. Right, so let's go ahead to create some variables. So the first one, we got the second, and I'm going to assign double zero to it. And the next one, we got the variable tent. Also assign the same value. And we got the output. second so this is gonna to grab the ID so this is the second right so we're going to grab this ID so I'm gonna copy this and paste it over here and we got the output then and I'm gonna using the get number by ID so this ID is getting from this spam so i'm gonna copy this paste it so the next one is the button okay start document get okay, by id right button start so i'll wish is this id right so i'm gonna copy this line of code I'll paste it for two times so the second button is button stop the last button is button reset so this id instead of getting button start okay which is button stop and this start is the reset so let's go ahead to check double confirm it yes it's match so after creating the variable, we can use to add the event listener. Sorry, so first one, which is when the button is start, which is being clicked on. And I'm going to set running some of the functions. So we can using the exx function code. So it's going to say much of times. So we can create a clear interval, which is to calling this function when the button is being clicked on. And we can pass by the parameter. And I'll create, so this is the interval known as the variable. K equals to set interval. And I'll write to call the function name, which is start time. And I'll running 10 as the, so this is the milliseconds so 10 milliseconds equals to 0 0.01 seconds so whatever my button size being click on and i would like to call these functions and pass to calling this start time functions all right so next one is the button stop and add the event listener which is click and i'm gonna running the functions and inside here i'm gonna use it as the clear interval when the button is being is being clicked and as the stop one so we're going to use it as the clear interval all right so the next one is the reset button also the same to add the event listener using the same event which is click Okay, so this one also the same. I'm gonna calling the clear interval, and when it is reset, okay, we can set the tens as zero zero, which is set to the start from zero and second. We can also set it as double zero, and for the output seconds in the HTML, we can set it as the seconds so this output in HTML we're gonna pass by the seconds which is the double zero and the output tens in the HTML gonna set as tens which is also return the double zero 
right so last one which is to calling the functions so over here you can see that this start time as the functions so let's go ahead to grab these start times and inside here we can create a function start time so inside our curly braces is the block of code to be executed if the start time button is being clicked so first of all we have to look through the times and we can use to check if the 10 is less than or equals to 9 and we can use to set the output 10 in the html we can use to pass 0 and assign the 10 right and another if statement if your 10 value is greater than 9 and the output 10 in the html we can only return 10. Right, so the next one we got the if statements also. If it's a tense, if it's equals to this is greater than right, if it's greater than 99, we're gonna look through the seconds, which is the increment, and we can set output seconds in a HTML and return sorry equal signs and return zero plus the seconds and we can assign the tens to zero which is starting from zero again and set our buttons in the html goes to zero plus tens Right, so which is the last st if statement if your second is greater than 9 we can set output right output second in the HTML and return second right I think that's it so now let's go ahead to check Okay, go back our index.html open different browser. So I'm gonna refresh this. If I just click start, that's not gonna be working. So let's go back to check. Right, so we'll miss a variable name which is the interval. So now let's go ahead to check. So as you can see, this small mistake is gonna stop executed the whole web page so now let's open the default browser so let's go ahead to check for the start button yes it's, it's working now so you can click to stop to push the time and you can resume again you can reset and you can keep uh, doing this again and again so this is the demo and if you like this video please uh, go ahead to subscribe and comment down below so thanks for watching and see you guys in the next javascript project